A person has died. The village mourns. A community comes together in the ritual of the funeral. These people are enacting the drama of a story told countless times before. They are honoring their beliefs, marking their loss, giving voice to their grief. Rituals make feeling and faith tangible drawing them into the physical world. In a moment of crisis, rituals are touchstones that tell us we are not alone, that we are linked to an ancient chain of human experience. Death renders a familiar body strange. The corpse resides between the known and the unknown. Rituals for the dead body reveal our fears and beliefs about death. How do we deal with this dead body in a way we consider to be honorable, appropriate, meaningful, loving? What is it that we do? Are we afraid of the body? Do we have to burn it? Do we, uh, do, we, do we have to bury it deep in the ground? Are we supposed to uh, make it as lifelike as possible? Uh, do, does the body have to remain intact? So going go to heaven that way? Is the body only an empty shell to be cast away? What is it we do? We have to do something. So every society does something with the disposal of the dead body. Jamshed Mavawala is a professor of anthropology. He's written about the symbolic meaning that lies at the heart of death rituals. In many, many cultures, people will close the eyes of the dead. In many cultures, they'll place, actually place objects on the eyes, like heavy coins, to keep the eyes closed. In many cultures, a way of signifying that the person is now dead and gone is to draw a sheet over the face of the person, to cover the face of the person, which we never do to the living. Partly to give the dead person the respect that they deserve at that time. And it's a kind of a ritual, symbolic separation. Since rituals are rooted in physical events, they also attend to practical matters. I think part of cremation is getting rid of the body permanently. The body is not important, it is the spirit of the person that is important. There is this feeling that the person is rising to the gods, is going up with the flames, is being pure, the body is being purified, and the spirit is being uplifted by the fire. There's also a sense that this is a very powerful element and it takes over the weak body. Fire was a good way of cleansing the system of transmitted disease. I believe that the effort to preserve the appearance of, of a cadaver springs from the same uh, benevolent impulse which is to remove the disagreeable aspects uh, of death. Frank Gonzales Cruci is an anatomical pathologist and author. He comments on embalming as a ritual that masks rather than confirms the reality of death. It can be carried to a ridiculous extreme. It can be carried to a, a 
noxious uh, extreme uh, when people are made to forget that there is such a, an important determinant in our existence as death itself. People are made to think that, that it is always something pleasant, that uh, death uh, like disease and old age and deformity uh, do not really exist when the ravages of disease are never seen by the collected, polite, quiet people that attend the wake, but see instead an artificial mannequin restored or made up to give the appearance of being asleep. So deep and enduring is the human need for ritual that at this moment, somewhere in the world, people are performing death rituals that are thousands of years old. But our world is changing rapidly and people are also finding new ways to embody their beliefs and emotions in ritual. Ron Grimes is a professor of religion and culture at Wilfrid Laurier University. His son, Trevor, died from a congenital disorder at the age of nine. Ron's divorce from Trevor's mother embittered the funeral. Well, when, Tre when Trevor died, I was out of town. I wasn't very far. I was 20 miles down the road, but I was out of town. When I got back, I went straight to the funeral home. Arrangements basically were already in the process. And I wanted to see Trevor. And they said, well, you can't do that. I said, well, what do you mean I can't do that? Well, he's not ready. I said, what do you mean he's not ready? You mean, uh, you mean he's naked? Uh, well, yeah, partly. We haven't got, his, got the clothes on him, the proper clothes and everything. And I said, he's my son, you know. Uh, I saw what he would look like when he came into the world, I know what he looks like naked. So I started downstairs. And I realized when I got down there, this is like this was the only time I was going to have with him. And I had about five or ten minutes before two funeral directors came down after me to, to lead me out to him. But I knew that I would never be able literally just to put hands on him. When he was born, I put my hands all over him. When he was dead, I want to put my hands all over him. In one sense, it doesn't become real until I've actually laid hands on him. Ron Grimes fulfilled his need to mark Trevor's death and commemorate his life by creating his own ritual. Finally, we all wound up saying, well, we just have to do it over again. So a few days later on the weekend, basically what happened was several of us had a, a funeral, not in the cemetery and not in the funeral home, but in, in the backyard. We set up a tent in the backyard. We took Trevor's toys in the backyard. We planted things, we dug up thing, things. That was the day that the kite showed up. The kite's still very important in our family, the kite with the names of, of our dead on it. Trevor's was the first name on that kite. Uh, so that was the beginning of a kind of domestic ritualizing. In my estimation, there should be something to mark the passing of that life and something that allows an individual to say, this is over be it a burial, be it a cremation, whatever the case may be, something that allows that individual to say, I'm going to move forward from here, that has been closed. My life will never be the same. It can't be. But I can move forward. Mm -hmm.